All right, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy, Three Stickity Stacks in this thing, baby, representing Team Kings of Games. And uh, as promised, not even promised, I didn't promise it, but um, as I said, I would do because a lot of people asked for it. Uh, I'm going to be showcasing some Dragon Maid combos. Now, I will say, depending on your variant, this information might not be useful to you at all. Because if you're playing pure Dragon Maids with a bunch of trap cards and Pot of Disparity and Extravagance and just pretty much playing like regular Dragon Maid control, like mid-range Dragon Maids like I used to play, this information is pretty much useless to you because a lot of these interactions are only possible if you're playing the cards that I'm playing. So if you're not playing the cards I'm playing, a lot of these combos are not necessarily possible for you. But pure Dragon Maids can still assemble a lot of these boards just missing some of the cards um, but pure dragon mates can still set up uh, this right here without playing any rocket cards with which is what people call quote quote dragon link so I guess without even rocket tracer uh, pure dragon mates can still actually set this board up grab that Trishula fusion oh it's already under there all right so pure dragon mate can actually set up VFD uh, shall and seals and that's pure Dragon Maids without the Rockets. All the Rockets really did for me was just give me more gas, more extenders, an additional negate, and also another one card, two bodies, uh, which is super duper good. So a lot of people would say, oh, this is Dragon Link, but it's like, really? Pure Dragon Maid can make this board without using the Rocket cards. So, like, this board's still possible, but in pure Dragon Maids, it takes so much. A lot of the bigger boards, regardless of the variant that you're uh, going to be making, they require a lot of resources. The commitment's always worth it because the payout for these boards is really, really high. Uh, because with Shao and Seal, uh, these cards have a very, very high ceiling and they also allow you to pretty much just mitigate costs. They pay for themselves over time and they just generate recursive advantage. Recursive advantage means it's a piece of advantage that you just keep looping over and over on like an endless thing. Uh, where you just keep getting more and more cards off of what still got you two turns ago. You'll be working with those resources for the next three to five turns until your opponent's dead. Uh, the same thing with Shao. So a lot of these boards are worth the commitment because you actually replace your boards. Unlike uh, other traditional combo decks where the board that they make is pretty much their turn one board is their best board and there's really no follow-up that can re-establish that same board outside of maybe virtual worlds virtual worlds is probably the only combo deck per se uh, which is more like for me it's like a mid-range deck honestly i think more virtual worlds is a mid-range deck but it's the only deck that can pretty much recur the same board and make it over and over and over uh, but this deck also can do that so what i'm gonna do is start off with one card combos i'll show you two i'll show you like a good three card combo that can end you on uh shao Warlord, Savage, Seal, and Tidying, which is two bounces and two Omni Negates. That same combo can also end you on VFD plus Savage. But I, if I had to pick between VFD and Savage, or Shao, Savage, Seal, Tidying, I'd go for Shao, Savage, Seal, Seal Tidying, because that board's a lot safer against Droplets. But if you have VFD, Savage, and your opponent Droplets you for two, and they have like game in their hand, uh, it's, you're obviously just going to lose. So sometimes it's better to not summon VFD, I know it sounds crazy, but just because of Droplets and Dark Roller and stuff, sometimes your boards are just more resilient. I really want to say Droplets because Dark Roller doesn't really work against VFD. Um, but anyway, so when it comes to one card combos, um, there is, I, if you guys play Pokemon, there's a reference I'm going to use for my one card combos, which is called Magnitude 1. It's actually like a ground type Pokemon move. Uh, it's called Magnitude, and it can go all the way up to 10, and the higher the magnitude, the more you can do with it. Um, so the one-card combos have a Magnitude 1, which is the weakest, Magnitude 2, which is the most solid. Um, you're going to get a lot more out of that card, but you're going to still play out of the territory of a lot of different hand traps. And then there's Magnitude 3, which plays into every hand trap that can be combo. Um, so Magnitude 1 is still passed. Magnitude 2 is to hit Romulus on the way to seal. Magnitude 1 skips Romulus. Magnitude 2 hits Romulus on the way to seal. Magnitude 3 is a full guard dragon combo that's only supposed to be used to OTK your opponent. Because uh, any one of your 11 one card starters in this deck can end on Boros Sword, uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal, and also uh, Boros Savage Dragon. If you start with Black Metal, your board is pretty much going to be very similar as well. Uh, but anyways, we're going to start the one guard uh, combos. So uh, before I start the one guard combos, the last thing is 
you definitely want to practice this deck on your own and um, basically everything I teach you take it and try to create your own combos you're gonna see how to get to that step and then I want you to kind of rework it fine-tune it for yourself and make your own combos and learn how to play the deck meaning you have to put some work in uh, I'm not gonna literally like walk you through everything and teach you I'm not gonna do all the work for you there's still gonna be some work you're gonna have to do yourself so we're going to start off with a one card combo, Parlor, Chamber, or Black Metal. They're all the same result uh, for Magnitude 1. This is a one card seal. So you're just going to Normal Parlor, Dump Tiding, Link her off into Striker Dragon, Striker Dragon Effect to grab Boot Sector Launch. And um, this is very important that at the end of this, Boot Sector Launch needs to be up on the field. I'll explain why. You're going to Tiding for your Parlor. And you're going to link her off into a seal. And that's magnitude one. So a lot of your combos can go deeper or you can kind of play conservative and safe. What does seal do by itself? It does a lot. In fact, I'm going to talk about this for a second before I get to magnitude two. So seal by itself is two interruptions or one interruption plus a follow-up. So it's a very good investment. The payout for this card is always going to be good and residual. Residual, if you guys understand what the terminology residual even means, um, let's say I'm Michael Jackson and I made a song in 2009. It could be 2015 and I'm still making money off of that same song. That's residual income. So what residual value is in Yu-Gi-Oh! is when you commit a resource, in the long run, it has a cascading or a snowball effect where it turns into a plethora of cards and opens doors and avenues for you to exploit and get more resources than you ever committed in the first place. It's like investing in a stock and your investment turns into a much heftier payout than what you initially put in in the first place. That's what seal is. Seal is re residual value. That's what every one card starter is. So seal by itself can snowball into up to a plus three. Seal by itself also has some neat tricks. If you have Seal with a back row, I'll teach you guys a cool little interaction. Let's say you are playing Control Dragon Maids and you're running Dino Mischus and Torrential and Ice Dragon's Prisons. So let's say I activate Torrential, Dino Mischus, or Ice Dragon's Prison. I can actually chain my Seal to that activation, bounce the Torrential, the Ice Dragon's Prison, or the Paleozoic Dino Mischus back to my end. It will still resolve because it was activated and then on a separate chain link still can summon so it's really explosive with uh torrential because you can wipe your opponent's board get your torrential back so you're getting double uses out of your torrential and then still can summon from deck so these are things i actually taught myself um and i didn't really know this at first how good still was by itself until i played this deck for a long long time and then i started to understand that there's more to this deck that meets the eye and a lot of these tricks can only come from playing the deck long enough. You can't just expect somebody to give you a handout and you just be a master of this deck because you just watch the video. It's not gonna work like that. But I will help you when I can. Uh, so same thing with Prison, Ice Dragon's Prison or Dino Mischus. The cool thing with cards like Dino Mischus that have a discard is because Dino Mischus doesn't discard for cost. You can actually activate Dino Mischus, target a face of card, chain seal, bounce Dino Mischus, and Dino Mischus can resolve discarding the same Dino Mischus that you activated. So you actually mitigate, mitigate the discard entirely and you don't have to use any of the other cards in your hand because you discard the same Dino for the activation because it discards on resolution. So when the chain resolves backwards, Seal bounces first because that's going to be the highest in the chain. Then Dino Mischus kicks in to discard the copy of Dino Mischus you activated. Then you banish that card and then on a separate chain link after everything resolves, Seal kicks in, which is super duper cool. So this card has a lot of tricks. The other and final reason after I'm done talking about Magnitude 1 is why did we put launch on the field? So let's say my opponent is playing a set 5 pass strategy, 5 traps, right? Seal needs to tribute itself so you can get something out. You're not going to do much with that seal against 5 back rows. So you need something to bounce to activate seal. That's why launch is important. And the other thing is if your opponent activates, let's say, Lightning Storm on your seal... If you're working with Seal by itself, you want to chain Seal, but you don't want to give them Lightning Storm back. You want to bounce your own card. If they activate Eldritch the Golden Lord, and that's the only card they activate, they have nothing to bounce. You want to be able to chain Seal and bounce the launch. You always want to be able to chain Seal in case it's in trouble or in case your opponent is playing a trap strategy that has nothing that you can bounce so that your Seal can still net you what I told you earlier, the residual value. So now we're going to go into Magnitude 2. Um, so far, we are like... 10 minutes in and I will say I'm not going to teach you everything in this video so 
don't be disappointed. Just be grateful for what you can get. Because I'm definitely always grateful for whatever I can get. Even if it's just a little bit, it's better than nothing. Because this video is not going to cover everything. But I'm going to get you the basics. And then the rest, you're going to have to put some work in yourself. So here's Magnitude 2 off of the same one card combo. Parlor, Dump Tiding, Linker off in a Striker. Search your Boot Sector Launch. Banish Tiding, Summon Parlor. And then you're going to link in a Romulus. You're still going to end on Seal, but here's the difference. Sector Launch is in your hand. This is just a free resource off of your one card combo. So it's paid for itself in a sense that you have five cards in hand. You're going to get a nice plus two because you get a free link two. And on top of getting a free link two, you get two cards to hand. So you're actually on a plus two because you're going to have six cards in hand and a free body here. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to activate that ravine. You're going to discard a card that you don't need. Or if you open like Absa Router, that's pretty nuts. You could discard Absa Router for cost and that's free real estate. You're going to discard and send Tempest from your deck to your grave. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to activate Tempest, banish both of these, summon Tempest, link these two off into Seal. And here is what Magnitude 2 gets you. It's not the equivalent of Seal Pass in this sense. You have three follow-ups instead of one. Seal is follow-up number one. Ravine turns into Absa Router or more Dragon Fodder for your next turn. It could even dump mates for you to reborn them. It also dumps high-level anagrams so your battle phase can get you pluses. So follow-up number two and then follow-up number three is Tempest, which is a high level to go into Shao or Fodder to go into another seal. It's, it's whatever you want to do with it. It's Link Climbing as well. So this is a follow-up, this is a follow-up, and this is a follow-up. Off of one card, you've got yourself three follow-ups. So this is how you can juice your cards. And if you're just playing like a setup, when you play other control-based decks, setup is key. That's one of the crucial factors when you play like Shadals. If you're playing against Shadals, or you're playing against a Dogmatica or a Trap Varian or Eldritch, setup is so crucial. It's very important to get your setup because when you start generating your advantage, that's going to basically ascertain it to critical mass. Um, so what critical mass is going to be is so many bodies that your opponent will not be able to keep up with you. So you're initially planning ahead with this. This is magnitude 2. You're planning ahead because you have three follow-ups. So your next turn is going to be way more explosive than your first turn and so on and so forth. Uh, and the final, which is going to be magnitude, uh, magnitude 3... Uh, is actually just going to be a one card OTK. The reason why it's supposed to be a one card OTK is because if you are not going for game, you should never go this far with the starter, even though they have the power to do that. Um, that's the, the idealistic mid range mindset. Just because I'm going to do it doesn't mean I can. Sometimes I just don't combo, even though my deck can combo. I can play like an extremely immense amount of cards and just like commit to a really, really explosive inboard with multiple interruptions. Sometimes I don't. When I know what deck I'm playing against, I know that Tidying, Seal, and Shao is good enough to beat them. If I'm playing against Virtual World and I end on Tidying, Seal, even without Shao, that's good enough to beat that deck. And you don't have to commit a lot to get that so you can keep the rest of your resources for later. You also play into less territory of other hand traps like Nibiru, etc. Even though this deck combos through Nibiru and Gamma and Ghost Ogre and all that extremely well. So here's what Parlor by herself also can do, or Black Metal or Chamber. I'm just going to keep Parlor because she's already here. Dump Tidying. Link her off into Striker. Get your Boot Sector launch. Tidying out the Parlor. Make Romulus. Romulus get Ravine. Activate Ravine. Discard a random. Send Absa Router. And grab your Tracer. And this is actually a one card OTK. And then I'll jump up to a two card combo. Show you a three card combo. And we can go ahead and just end the video like that. So you're going to activate launch. Special Tracer. Activate Tracer, target the launch, destroy it. Notice how I Guard Dragon combo on the left side because I want my right zone number one to be open to play around Geo. Um, so I put my Shao or my main hitter right there. So I normally Guard Dragon combo on the left zone unless I don't have a choice. Um, so you're going to bring out your target, link these both off into Opium Pisty. Activate LP, summon Black Metal Dragon, link all of these into Vorosaur Dragon. So, Parlor is dangerous. And if you're not playing my variant, if you're playing pure Dragon Mates, Parlor is not a one card OTK. So, Parlor is not dangerous unless you play the right cards. And see how that one card led into all of this. Look at how many cards you've already got out of your deck. So, it's kind of sort of like Dragon Link, but it's really not because you're not playing Chaos Space, you're not playing Safer or Levianir or Brotar. You don't do Needle Fiber. The only thing this deck has in common with Dragon Link is that it uses Seal. And it uses Borload Savage and the Rocket cards. That's the only thing it has in common. Everything else about this deck is Dragon Mate.
Um, and also Rocket Dragon Links are using Dragon May cards. So, you know, it's like, these are actually Dragon May cards. Uh, but we have Pisty now. We're gonna go ahead and summon Tracer. Um, I forgot to search off Black Metal, the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. So you summon Tracer, banish the Pisty, summon Red MD, use his effect, bring back the Rocket. And then you have Bore Load. You have um, two of the three Borals. I actually play three of the Boral family, Furious, Savage, and Sword. So you're going to get out two of the three Borals, and that's game because this is actually 12,400 damage before Boral Sword gains any attack. So There you have it. That is a one-card OTK. The only time you should ever go that far off of a Parlor or a Chamber or a Black Metal is if you're going for game. If you're not, it's not worth it. Seal is always going to be better. <laughs> Seal is just a disgusting card. So let me check. Time here, 15 minutes. All right, so now I can jump up to... What if you have an extender, right? I can move to another one-card starter now. So, like, let's say I have an extender. What can I do with, like, Black Metal plus Nocto? Black Metal plus um, World Legacy Guard Dragon is a lot more broken. I'm going to do World Legacy Guard Dragon for, like, one of the three-card combos because this plus any dragon is always going to be insane. <laughs> like, this is way too good. So I'm going to show you a low-quality extender because even... Uh, <laughs> Like, Quick Launch would be a better extender than Nocto in this situation, because now your Ravine can dump, like, a Dragon Maid or a Tempest and get you even more extenders. Um, so we're going to go Metal plus Nocto. What can these two cards do just themselves? So you're going to obviously get out your Striker, Chain Link 3, Nocto, and then you're going to get your Red MD and the Boot Sector Launch. Next up, you're going to link these two off into Romulus, chain link to Nocto, plays around Gamma extremely well. So Nocto actually is extremely powerful when you combo with it because Gamma on Romulus can set you back to where you have to commit more resources to go into a seal to guard dragon combo if you were planning on doing it. If you were just gonna summon Shao and do other things, the Gamma on Romulus isn't doing much, but it can sometimes deny your access to the rocket engine. So it's always nice uh, just to be able to chain block the Romulus. Draw a random and search ravine. Then you're going to activate Ravine, and you're going to discard a random, and you're going to dump the Apps Router. Um, oh yeah, my bad. Actually, something that you're supposed to do for this combo that, let me just go back. Um, I'm trying to like speed through it because I need to get as much as I can get done before the timer's up for this. Is uh, When you're in this situation right here, where you've done the Striker and you've chain blocked with Nocto, and you've got Red MD in the field spell, you are actually supposed to use Red MD, banish the Striker, Summon Red MD, bring Black Metal back, and then link the Red MD and the Nocto into ROM, and still get your draw on your Black Metal. This is important so that you can Guard Dragon combo without being locked into only Darks off of Rocket Tracer. So you're going to notice that that's actually important because that means this combo is a lot more flexible in what you can make with it. But if you lock yourself into Darks, you're only going to be able to access the Boros, which is going to be Sword, Savage, and Furious. You're no longer able to summon VFD, Shao house or seal which are a lot more important and have just a higher ceiling in general so darks are like the least favorable of all your boss monsters but sometimes it's the only choice you have so you're going to dump router discard the cards you drew off romulus so it can be a self-contained two card combo without needing any other cards and then you're just going to activate launch summon your tracer and you don't use tracer's effect not yet and you're just going to go lp pisty um so like this is a really really good setup because you're guard dragon comboing, but this time you actually have no restriction. Um, I will show you that there are some safe ways like you can make seal and then you can use the tracer. So this same hand can also make seal. Then you can use tracer to guard dragon combo under a heretic seal so that you're safer to Nibiru. Um, but also at the same time, uh, I just don't want to put too much emphasis into all the different possibilities of what can happen to your combo because then it'll take way too long. But I just feel like if you're a smart enough or a responsible enough player, you should play around what hurts your deck the most. And that's how I top so much with pretty much every deck I play because I'm very, very cautious and conservative. Even though I play combo decks, I'm still a super duper cautious player. Like I'm just very, very careful. Um, so I'm showing you guys this, but a lot of the times I would summon seal and just use tracer to guard dragon combo under the seal. But sometimes I feel like it's not necessary to guard dragon combo. So I'll just end on seal plus boar load savage. So this is a two card combo to the safest way to play is just end on seal and boar load savage. And you have a f interruption an interruption and a follow up. Um, that's a lot safer, but I'm trying to show you how you can get the most out of your cards 
But just keep in mind this same two card combo ends on Seal plus Savage. And Seal Savage ain't nothing to joke at either. It's a really strong board. But anyways, Guard Dragon comboing here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and activate LP. And what LP is going to do is it's going to summon out Parlor. And this combo can actually make VFD. So you're going to summon Parlor. You are going to dump Changeover off of Parlor, bounce her off of the Changeover's affecting grave. And then you're going to Pisty for your Tracer. Um, so what you can do from here is you can banish all three of these. And you're going to make the Trishula Fusion and activate its effect to banish the Tempest from your deck. And it's really cool that you can do it in this order, so that way you can still end on Savage with the VFD. Um, so you're going to banish Tempest, search a second copy of Parlor, and then you're just going to change over Fuse with the Parlor you searched off Tempest and the Parlor you bounced off Changeover. And you're going to summon a house, and you can just make your VFD, and you can make your Borload Savage off of just a two-card combo. The same two-card combo can also just end on Savage plus Seal. And also, because you're Guard Dragon comboing, you can even uh, figure out a way to get to Shao. But just so many possibilities. Uh, that's why like, if I focused on all the possibilities, uh, this whole entire video would be about one combo and all the different things you could do with the same combo. This deck is very flexible, and I will say if you struggle with Decision Anxiety, this is not the deck for you because this deck is not linear in any way, shape, or form. And because it's not linear and because the end boards can... You can kind of just go with the flow and you can still make a good board. It can sometimes be very, very, um, like, taxing on your mind. It's, you know, it's what decisions anxiety, uh, decision anxiety is, is when you have way too many choices and you don't know which one to make. So oftentimes you screw yourself over by making the wrong choice because it looked better. Um, and honestly, what always looks better is making VFD. But I've learned playing this deck that sometimes it's better to actually end on seal plus something else. The reason why Seal is safer than VFD is because this card is security under droplets. And I play around what I can play around. If I didn't get Nibiru, the next thing I'm playing around after Nibiru is just not in uh, the realm of possibility is going to be Forbidden Droplet. And I think that this is just way too important, uh, like just way too important. Um, so just things to think about, you know, be mindful of that this isn't decision anxiety is a real thing. And um, this deck is just not for everybody. Like, I know some people might want to force it and be like, no, but I want to play this deck so bad, but it's just not for everybody. So what we'll do is we'll go jump into a three-card combo really fast. Let me see what time is looking like. Oh, yeah, so we can do just, like, one more. I can't do everything, but, again, this is more, like, just a um, courtesy to my um, subs because a lot of people want this. And um, sometimes, I ain't going to lie, sometimes I'm the, the kind of person I am is... If, if I didn't get no help to learn it and I got this far without anybody teaching me anything about this deck, I think that you're capable of doing the same exact thing. I think just that, the, I mean, the way our brains are designed, there's like just, we just don't understand how much we're capable of mentally. And a lot of people just don't want to put the work in. And I think it's a lot more rewarding when you learn the combo yourself because you put in the work and it's very rewarding. It's a gratifying feeling, but some people just either don't want to put the work in or some people actually are struggling with learning how to get the end board. So that's why I'm still doing this, even though I kind of don't want to. It's just I understand how it can be when you're like kind of stuck and you're still trying to solve a deck and you just can't solve it on your own. That's understandable. So here's a three card combo, uh, Black Meadow plus either Parlor or Chamber and a really good extender. This time we're showing Rolex like Cigar Dragon. Parlor plus World Legacy Guard Dragon itself is a ridiculously OP two-card combo. This is one of probably the best two-card combo is either Kitchen or Parlor plus World Legacy Guard Dragon. That's like literally the most insane two-card combo in this deck. But I'm showing a three-card combo now. And this three-card combo can get you VFD plus other stuff. But since I kind of already showed you VFD, I'm going to show you now how you can get Borload, Savage, Shao, Seal, and Tidying off of this combo. So... Starting off with Metal, um, and I think a lot of people are familiar with Parlor or Kitchen plus World Legacy Guard Dragon. Anybody that plays Dragon Maids is already familiar with this, so I don't think this is anything new, but the combo I'm getting ready to show you is definitely not like a, just a, oh, you're going to see this somewhere. It's something that you've got to kind of got to figure out after practicing so much with the deck. So we're going to go Striker 2, 
grab boot, metal one, grab red MD. And uh, you're not gonna use red MD yet. Uh, so what you're actually gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and world legacy early, summon black metal. I need to make sure that I'm doing this combo right because um, this is one of those ones. And again, this combo can also make seal before you guard dragon combo. Um, so keep in mind that you can do that. I'm not going to do that because I'm just showing the combo, but just know that you can make seal before you guard dragon combo, uh, especially because you haven't even used red MD yet. Um, but I'm going to hold the red MD until a little bit later. So <clears throat> what we're going to do next is we're going to activate Ravine and discard parlor, and we're going to send Absa router and we're going to grab tracer. And then we're going to go ahead and activate launch and summon our tracer. We're still holding red MD. We're not using it yet. Uh, and again, you can still summon seal. <laughs> like this combo is very resilient to Nibiru. I'm not going to play around it um, just because I want to show you guys how to get the most you can get out of your cards. But when you play conservative, you miss opportunities. And I do do that sometimes. I play so safe that sometimes I miss my chance to make the best board I could have made and my opponent plays through it. And I know I could have made a better board, but because I was trying to play safe, and play conservative and not lose to so many hand traps, I made my board mediocre and my opponent didn't even have what I was playing around. So sometimes it's worth it to just go all in, especially in a deck like this where your boards are gonna pay for themselves. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and activate uh, LP. And LP is going to summon Chamber and Chamber is going to search a Dragon Maid Tidying. And then we're gonna link the Chamber into Pisty. Then we're going to activate Pisty and we're going to go ahead and get out our Parlor. We're going to activate Parlor because we haven't used her effect yet. Grab Changeover and bounce her. And the Changeover, then we can banish the LP. Summon Red MD. Use the Red MD to bring back the Tracer. We can Dragon Maid Changeover, the Red MD, and the Parlor to summon a Shao. We can link these two off into a seal. And to finish your board, you can just Tracer, bring a rocket out, and that is a combo that gets you seal, Savage, Shout, and Tidying. And that is one of the most impressive boards, uh, like literally. And if the other two cards in your hands are extenders, you can actually, uh, like no cap, you can actually end on VFD plus Shout. Uh, tidying, Savage, and Seal. I've never summoned this board without using my entire hand. Uh, it is literally like a five card combo. I have never summoned VFD, Shao, Borlo, Savage, Seal, and Tidying and had anything left in my hand except for the parlor that I searched off the Trishula Fusion. So that combo is not like a idealistic combo. It is just literally like I'm just going all in and I'm going to make you droplets for four and still lose to a Seal and a Tidying. Um, so it's very, very impressive. Uh, but anyways, finishing the combo, Tracer can go ahead and hit the launch because this is more impactful as a seal target to bounce than the uh, sector launch is because it loses a lot of value because you just keep so many bodies on field that launch rarely ever summons from grave. It's very few and far between. I've done it, but it doesn't really come up a lot. Uh, we can go ahead and put Savage here. And you just equip the Romulus, and there you have it. That is your end board. Two Omni Negates, two Bounces, and three follow-ups, which is insane. Um, so follow-up number one comes off of the Shao. And what Shao can do is actually summon the Chamber. Actually, you know what? What I would recommend, because Tiding is already a follow-up for you, is I would recommend go ahead and dumping an Anagram. Get Parlor and dump a high level on your opponent's standby so that battle phase actually can get you advantage now. So now I'm gonna show you guys what happens when you're playing with one card as a follow-up and like let's say if the worst happens and your whole board gets destroyed, right? Let's just say for example, like everything's just gone. So what can you get with one card like Foolish Burial Goods, Dragon Maid Hospitality, or Nurse, or another parlor or a chamber? All of these one cards equal out to a lot of uh, different results. So one thing I'll say is if you're working with Nurse as a follow-up, this is how much potentially you can get, depending on how smart you were with your graveyard setup. So like, let's say you got your anagrams in there. So you're going to normal Nurse. You're going to activate her effect. This is a one-card combo, follow-up combo. 
Summon Chamber, and this is why these this deck is the queen of comebacks. Dragon Maids are the queens of comebacks. Use Chamber to search Hospitality. Activate Hospitality, and you're going to go ahead and summon Parlor and dump her Anagram. And then you'll use Parlor to dump a Tidying if it wasn't already there. Dump a Tidying, and then you can banish the Tidying, summon something else out, and then at the start of your battle phase, you can bounce and then summon the anagram. So like, let's just say also, for example, you had a properly summoned house because you did the VFD combo and it's happened where I got droplets so the VFD died. So you can actually start a battle phase, use chamber, bounce herself to summon house, then separate chain, use nurse, not even separate chain, just activate on res, use nurse, bounce herself to summon earnest, and then use parlor, bounce herself to summon her anagram. You're gonna get two pops off of house and then your main phase two, you can also use changeover and grave to bounce an anagram and get another pop. So you actually get three pops off house. And then this is what you're working with. So you're gonna have five cards in hand, two cards on field, and all of this happened because of one nurse. And your ending board can still be shall plus seal, and you have just too much for your follow-ups. So this is like this deck is crazy, you guys. Like this deck is very crazy. This is why the grind is so on point. It's like the grind is on fleek. With this deck another cool little tip um because i've got like a minute and a half left is i've done this before where i've like summoned maids they didn't die but my top deck was horrible and i had like nothing in grave except for a changeover so the same thing happens if let's say for example you have a nurse and you just can't do anything and her anagram is not in the graveyard yet so you can't go to battle phase and bouncer you can just literally change over bouncer and then that becomes your normal summon for turn and you do the same thing which is ridiculous like this deck is very good but yeah you guys hopefully you guys got some insight from this video um i hope that you you know at least appreciate it and um try some stuff out for yourself at home and let me know what results you end up coming up with and how this was helpful for you but our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name lord jesus christ thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven please give us this day our daily bread lord and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors Lead us not to temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. All right. Peace.